Big round of applause for Nick Son. Thank you very much. I'm not a comedian, I'm just a frustrated rapper with no rhyming skills. That's one of my rap songs just then. It's very short. You guys, uh, you guys ready for some fucking hijinks tonight? Some fucking hippity hoppity and uh, some sketchy wretchedy. Some comedy fucking tragedy. Great. This is gonna be. Did you guys have a good Australia Day? Yeah. yeah. Fucking Australia Day. Are you guys sick and tired of uh, them using Australia Day to sell your shit? Just play along. I'm gonna do the joke anyway. All right. Also, I have no Asian jokes. If you're expecting that, just fucking put a gun in your mouth and kill yourselves. Thank you. One clap there. Uh, I, I'm sick and tired of people using Australia to sell your shit. I saw an ad for Golden Gay Time and it said, Golden Gay Time, the taste of Australia Day. And I was like, fuck, I had no idea that Aboriginal bodies taste like biscuit covered ice cream. That's probably why they kill them all, because they're a tasty treat. How could you resist? Thank you. Uh, all my comedy is like this, by the way. It's not going to get happier or better. I'm just going to drive this bitch into the ground and then bring on some fucking rappers. And you guys can pretend like you're black or something. Not that I have any problem with black people, I've got like three of their albums, alright? Fucking Will Smith, Jazzy Jeff, Eminem, he's black, isn't he? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. How do you guys feel about both people? You guys even give a shit anymore about anything? I can't even see anything, all I can see is blackness and my own fears. Can you guys just keep it down? I'm just trying to fucking smash the shit out of this gig and you guys are like having a conversation with friends and stuff. It's really, uh, it's really impolite. I'm being paid a hundred bucks for this, so please shut the fuck up. And pretend you like this as much as I don't. All right, this is going better than I thought it would. I, I just wanted I had my first gig 11 years and fucking five days to this day. How fucking weird is that? How far I've come, huh? Anyway, that's a romantic dream of stand-up. I wish I was a fucking rapper, man. That's heaps cooler. Sorry? Do a rap. Okay, fine. Uh, my name is Nick. I have a big no rhyming schemes. I think I'm just... How about, you know, you have conscious rappers. How about I be a self-conscious rapper? I'll be a self-conscious rapper. My name is Nick. I think about myself too much when I'm in public. I wish I had rhymes, but I don't because I read too much Dr. Seuss. Now I don't know what to do with myself. Fucking do it. Be fucking fucking. Uh... I was about to do a reference, a rap reference to win you over. That's how cheap I am. I'll be like backing up, run the jewels on fucking next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one guy knows that. Fucking honestly, I, I don't even know the real rap. You know what I mean? I just fucking like new shit because I'm fucking a smashing pumpkins faggot. Anyway, I don't know why I said that word. I just said it. I'm not. I'm not homophobic, right? I fucking. So I know, I know, I'm being sarcastic here. This is all just a stage character, all right? I'm not rapping right now. This is a fucking... This is like just really bad slam poetry with a really shit meter. Um, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do any slam poetry. Who needs to hear verbal equivalents of knives shoved in your ears? Anyway, um, I'm just kidding. Good luck to any slam poetry tonight. There's a future in it. So, uh, yeah, uh, boat people, how do you guys feel about boat people? I personally can't stand these half boat, half people coming to this country. <laughs> Fuck, who do they think they are? The first fleet? Fuck. This entire country was founded on illegal immigration, excuse me. The, the fucking Anzacs were boat people, do you realize that? The Anzacs protecting this country by invading Turkey and failing. Uh, I'm not passing any aspersions on Anzacs. If there are any Anzacs in the crowd, Fucking good for you for listening to hip hop at this age. Uh, I have no problems with the Anzacs, all right? I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they died needlessly, all right? I fucking love those biscuits, okay? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, Tim Tams are a lot better. Let's just face it. But Anzac biscuits are good when you don't have any other biscuits or food left in the house. Um, so good for them. Uh, yeah, so uh, what else can I talk to you guys about? Fucking uh, shit like that. I guess I'm getting older, which is kind of weird. What is the deal with time? It just keeps fucking going. I turned 30 recently. Is anyone here uh, 30 at all? All right. Who here isn't 30? I know, I can tell from the enthusiasm shrouded as ignorance. Let me give you guys a crash course on what it feels like to turn 30. You know when you're really high on ecstasy 
And then you realize you're not as high as you were 15 minutes ago. And you're like, hey, let's take more ecstasy. But then you realize they've stopped making ecstasy. Forever. 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 That's what it feels like to turn 30. It's fucking great. Yeah, now I have to make all the big decisions in life. I have to think about whether or not I want to get married. And I, I don't want to really get married. It's going to take a very special uh, visa for me to get married, <laughs> specifically an American one. So if there are any American women in this audience, I'll fucking, I'll eat you out until your legs fall off. Uh, because I love you, ladies. I have, to get, I have to go to these fucking weddings now. It's fucking gross, man. And I'm in my 30s, so it's not, it's not even about I do. It's more about you'll do, I guess. You know what I mean? It's just like, I know, it's true. It's just fucking... You take this person as your lovely wedded wife because you don't want to die alone? Okay, well, uh, I'm just trading it for a 50 50 fucking chance here. It's not really much better. <laughs> you guys are a good crowd. I like you guys a lot. I can't wait to spend this hundred bucks on fucking, I don't know, pot or something. I'm not, I'm, I quit pot for like three months because I thought it would fucking make me better. And then after three months, it was like, there was fucking no difference. And I was like, oh fuck, I thought it was that. It's not, it's just in me. It, it's fucking me. I have to quit me now. This is why self-help doesn't work in my situation, because I'm fucking stealing the equation. I can help myself, I'm the guy who got me into this situation, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I don't want a personal trainer or a life coach. I just need a high-functioning individual just to sub into my life and just fucking get it back up to a good enough level, and then I sub back in and drive into the fucking ground. And when I'm fucking scraping the bottom of the barrel of my face again, I just hire him again. That's what I should do. So, uh, that's pretty good. But that's my head about aging. There's so much fucking pressure on being young all the time. Like, all you young guys, right? That's, that's the peak of your life, right? You're just a good-looking bunch of morons. That's all it is, right? And this culture just worships youth. Why? You guys don't know fucking shit about shit. I know this because I used to be you. And I fucking didn't know anything. I just thought I knew everything. I thought by now I'd be fucking snorting coke off a geisha's vagina with Beck on some boat in LA. But instead I'm fucking doing some weird hip hop night for not enough money and free beer. So sometimes dreams don't work out the way that you want them to. I think we raise kids on way too much hope. Do you guys feel that? Like too many expectations. Not everyone can be Justin Bieber. That's all I'm trying to say, all right? Just every time you think of Justin Bieber, just remember there's about 3,000 teen suicides out there to balance it out. That sounds like a punchline in my head. Uh, thank you, one clap there. I found my crowd. And one person on the back. I hope you're a woman, I'm so lonely. Uh, <laughs> seriously. just uh, so, <laughs> uh, There's too much pressure on being young, you know what I mean? Uh, is this, uh, how shit is public? Like, I'm not an elitist, right? But it's just hard not to be when most people are shit. You know what I mean? Like, I was watching Pop Idol with my parents because they're gonna die before me, so they get dibs on the activities and we're just trying to spend some quality time with them. And it was just fucking... Don't you wish there was a button on your television control that you could press and whoever you pointed it on television, you could give them cancer? It'd be like the volume control button, you know what I mean? You could go up for a while just so they could feel it and then take it down for a while just so they could stay alive to get more cancer. Maybe we could finish Delta off, I don't know. Uh... Okay, I found a level, I found a level. You can't hate me. I'm ethnic, you'll fucking feel racist. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what else can I tell you about? Is there so much pressure on being young? I hated how, I was, I was in the supermarket, they play the worst fucking music there. And it's really hard to concentrate while I'm trying to steal vanilla beans and uh, USB discs, because I'm a middle class klepto. And, um... All it is, have you heard the lyrics? It's just, ooh baby, ooh baby, baby I love, I want you, baby I love you, baby this, baby that. It's like, no wonder there's so much pedophilia in the world. Everyone's being subliminally programmed by shit pop music to fuck babies. You know what I mean? Why can't we fucking, why can't we like idolize the elderly? Wouldn't that be good? Maybe then we'd have something to look forward to when we get old, you know? Why can't we sexualize the old people? And then maybe there'll be a little less pedophilia in this world and more people molesting old people. But let's face it, are the people who probably want and need sex. If you try to molest an old person, I'm pretty sure they'd just be like, yeah, sure, go ahead, as long as I can tell you a really boring story with no reference points you can relate to. 
them be the less creepy old men on the buses and stuff. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to heckle me, go for it. I've been fucking trained like a ninja. I'll fucking smash you down battle rap style without the long screens. <laughs> Thank you, one, one whistle there. Uh, so what else can I tell you? Um, hey, did you ever hear about something so fucked up that you're kind of glad it happened because you realized you had a conscience? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, um, like the guy who abducted those three women in Ohio? Yeah, yeah, and when I heard about that, I was like, oh, fuck, that's horrible. But then I had a second thought that was like, oh, God, I'm a, I'm a good person because I'd never, probably never do that. <laughs> but now that I think of it, I'm starting to think that maybe I would fucking do that because dating fucking sucks, doesn't it? I went on a date the other day. It was fucking horrible. Like, I, I had a cough with this girl, and because I, I thought it would make me stimulated, just made me anxious. It's very hard to be seductive when you're having a fucking level 10 panic attack, and sirens are fucking going off in your head, and you're trying to be like, ah. And I was just staring at a fucking mouth move, and all I could think in my head was just put her in the basement. Uh, just be a lot easier. I wouldn't treat her badly. I'm a good cook. I'd cook for her. I'd fucking buy her presents within her budget and stuff. I just wouldn't let her leave, you know what I mean? It's, Sucks, man. I got laid recently. I didn't mean to. It just kind of happened. Um, Couchsurfers.com, y'all. Fucking give it a shot. I honestly, I, I didn't expect it to come, but she was like, uh, I had a cold. I had bits of tissue in my beard. I really didn't expect anything, but somehow I hit it off with this lady. She was a feral. I don't have anything against ferals, but I realized I do have issues with the pubic dreadlocks. Um, it's kind of like moving through beaded curtains to get to a room that had been clean for a while. Seriously, I went down on her, it was like I was making out with a toothless Rastafarian. <laughs> like, fucking, brush your teeth, Bob Marley. Uh, <laughs> and so we got down to the down and dirty, and I didn't have any condoms, so I had to go to the fucking petrol station and get some condoms. So I went to the petrol station, I was like, do you want anything? She was like, get me a kid to surprise. I was like, whatever. And I went there and I put a 12-pack on the desk because I was feeling optimistic. And then I just put a kid of surprise next to it, and the guy just looked at me like, who the fuck you fucking man? I was like, I have no idea, couchsurfers.com, I don't even know her second name. Um, so before I go, uh, what else can I tell you about? I don't actually do stand-up comedy for a living, I just do this to support my dream of working in a call center. And, uh, that's right. Follow your dreams, people. <laughs> dreams are just something you see in your sleep as you die. Anyway, sorry, no. I'm, just be happy. I'm a happy guy. I fucking buy free range eggs. I love pugs. Uh, okay, it's really weird what calls me because it's coming back to aging. Because it's not really good getting old. Because it's not really like I called a woman the other day. She's 96 years old. I was like, oh fuck, that's three times my age. Do you have any advice for me? And she said, I have some advice for you. When you get to my age, death is your friend. Death is your friend. And I was like, shit. Uh, do you want to buy some raffle tickets or something? I work for the um, Red Cross, by the way. I didn't set that up properly. That joke failed, I'm sorry. Let's go back to some weird fucking rap. That actually rhymed, kind of. My name is Nick. I'm the MC, not a rapper MC, the comic MC. I'm 32, I work in a fucking call center selling shit to pensioners. Sometimes they send shit back which says return to sender. Then I go on a bender. There's some lady in the crowd. Feeds me a rhyme. And pulls me out of a dark spot. Thank you, I'm doing time. I like lemon and lime, thank you very much. Sometimes I'm feeling very kind. I took too much dexter today trying to work on the solo show that I gotta work out three days from now. I'm not a cow! Well, shit. Oh, actually I've got six minutes left. All right, fuck. <laughs> Come on, Nick, you can do it. <laughs> Stuff in there. So uh, my parents come from the third world. My parents were boat people. Well, they were plain people. Half plain, half people. And, uh... So I'm kind of living proof that you can come to this fucking country with absolutely nothing and just remain fucking nothing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, do you guys feel like in the... Oh, someone's taking a photo of me. Hey. Let's pull some NC poses. Mm. Oh, it's live from the internet. Oh, okay. Hey, internet people. Maybe you should fucking turn off your computer and engage in real life, you fucking idiots. 
There's a whole world of wonder out there. Get off Twitter and Facebook, you pieces of shit. Go visit my Twitter site, willanderson.rogo.com Go fuck yourself, ruffle, lol, twerk, yolo, yolo, yodo, yodo. So anyway, what's the deal with the internet? Uh, so uh, what, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the grief, what, white people. Well, what? Black people. Black people? What the fuck? I've done so <laughs> hey, what is the deal with black people? They're kind of blank and they're people. You break it down. Uh, no, no, no. Do you guys feel there's heaps of horrible stories in the news all the time? This one, I'm at a call center. Has anyone ever tried to inspire you? Have you realized there's this whole rash of inspirational stories in the media now, but they're not even inspirational, just horrible shit which happened to regular people that somehow is meant to inspire you? Like, just pick up M MX. I was, in, I was reading MX the other day, and they had an inspirational news article about a fucking beauty queen who was the victim of an acid attack and then became a motivational speaker, and somehow that was meant to inspire me. I was like, that's not fucking inspirational, that's fucking sad and weird, you know what I mean? Like, that's not inspiring, that's, that's the story of a woman who becomes a motivational speaker. I can't imagine anything more depressing in my life. <laughs> Why don't you ever hear the fucking stories about the ugly people who were the victim of acid attacks? You never hear that, do you? Today, an ugly lady was uh, the victim of an acid attack. No one really noticed much of a difference. But uh, sometimes a change is better than a holiday. All I'm saying is we're living in a culture where everyone's trying to feel better about themselves by comparing themselves to people who are worse off than them. Isn't that kind of unhealthy? I hate it when people go, hey, at least you're not living in the third world. Did you ever get that shit? Oh, I went to India, it was really horrible. At least we're not living in a third world. Well, can I just say, people, those third world people don't know the pain that I go through, okay? As a first world member. Like, they don't know the pain that I go through. I was at gelatismo the other day, okay? And all I really wanted was vanilla and fucking strawberry. But I was like, that's what, what I always get. I'm gonna fucking go for So I got the salted caramel and the fucking stewed fig. And it's okay. But it wasn't what I wanted, and I sat down on the fucking street curb, and I thought about that for about three hours, filled with regret. And those fucking children starving in Ethiopia don't know the pain that I go through of infinite choice, okay? They don't have that fucking torture. They're not going, what should we have tonight? Wet dirt or dry dirt? They don't have to go through that. Alright, it's getting a bit dark. <laughs> I'm a happy guy, let's do some body popping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, body popping. Alright, not really. Do you guys like beatboxing? Alright, well then check this out. Okay, look, I can't really beatbox, but it's close enough. <laughs> Two minutes to go! I fell the first section of my contractual obligation. Let's do some crowd work. What, you, you seem like a sprightly lady, miss. What, what, do you, what do you do for... Uh, I'm an artist. You're an artist? Yes. That's very bold. <laughs> what kind of artist? Uh, I do, um, I do this kind of stuff. You do oh, hip-hop uh, comedy drawing? No. That's, um, that's a very spread out genre there. Who do you sell it to? You don't sell that kind of stuff. I know, you I know. You just do it, you live it. You live it. Yeah. You live, you, you fucking dumpster dive. Nice dumb stuff. Nice It's romantic when you're 20. When it's 30, it's kind of troubling. Uh, people look at you and you're like, hey, I'm living the dream. It's romantic. That's what some lady told me. Oh, you're doing stand-up comedy. It's so romantic. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is. Just the other day, I took a shit in my outdoor toilet by cockroach infested chair house that I paid too much money for. And light was broke, so I lit a candle. And I had to take a shit by candlelight. And I was like, you're right. This is really romantic. <laughs> As I watch the shadows in the back of the door form pictures of my negative futures. So uh, it's really, uh, I'm glad you're an artist and you're fucking still real age, fucking follow the dream. And who's this person who's supporting your dream? Uh, my husband. Your husband? What do you do for a living, sir? Something more concrete? Oh, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a camera guy? Yeah. What's your favorite picture? <laughs> Ever. Too many to say. There's too many to say. All right, well, it's also that cold as uh, You, sir, you look like a massive hip-hop head. Who's your favorite rapper? Uh, don't have one. You don't have one? 
Okay? Uh, who's your, what's your favorite thing? Just say something, man. I got fucking... Oh, no, I've done my time. Well, you guys been a wonderful crowd. I was fucking shitting my pants before this. You guys are in for a good night. Uh, I'll be back in the second half with some more of my fucking negative shit. Um, and, and in the meantime, welcome to Sketch the Rhyme, everyone. Give it up for Sketch the Rhyme.